All right, hey guys, uh, Jason with Fat Finner Garage, and we get a lot of questions about coyote swaps, and it's hard to answer them all. And so what we did a while ago was we kind of put up on Instagram, if you have questions about coyote swaps, go ahead and send us uh, a few messages and we'll try to answer them. I think some of these were from YouTube, some of these are from Instagram, and we just wanted to kind of uh, go and answer some of these as best we can. So, boy, there's a lot to a coyote swap. They're very simple if done in kind of a precise, systematic way. And so that's something we've learned over time is that um, the more we're consistent with what we do, the better we are. And it has, and it really has just come through trial and error. Uh, lots of trial, lots of error, and you know, making mistakes. And that's just part of hot rod. And you're gonna go out, you're gonna do this, and you're just gonna make mistakes and it's gonna you know, frustrate you. But at the end of the day, there's, there's always a solution. And even for us, there's always uh, a better way to do things and we're always striving to achieve that. So uh, we'll go and go through some of these questions and I've got my reading glasses on so I can see. Chris2007 asked, is there already a kit or any plans for a bolting kit for the 80s and 90s uh, F series trucks? So yes and no. Like, our 73 to 79 kits for um, are going to be very similar, but we and we have heard people use them, but we don't actually have a kit that we've actually put together and said, yes, this works. And so, uh, something we're working on, and it's something that uh, as soon as we get some time set aside, we will actually uh, dial in one of those kits. But we have everything all the way up through 1979. Um, going back, starting at 1953, we usually have something put together. Uh, also, all the four-wheel drive kits, and also um, pretty much got dialed in the um, four-wheel drive kits as well for Broncos. Uh, Zach Baker had the question is, how hard is the computer side of things? So, that's a little bit of a loaded question because there's about, you know, as many ways to do a Coyote swap as you could imagine. So. There's guys out there that sell uh, a motor package and it's on a wooden crate and it starts up. And as long as you put all that wiring in, it's actually going to run. And that is a true story. You'll do, you'll do uh, use the same intake and um, for your cold air. And if you use everything precisely, it should run just like a Mustang. But the problem is, is that doesn't actually fit in every vehicle, nor do you want all the wiring. And so, you're going to have some differences between truck motors, car motors, what motor did you get, what it's going to require. And honestly, if you want to save yourself the most grief, get yourself a car motor and buy yourself a control pack. That's the least amount of grief. It actually is going to cost you more money that way, but it's going to save you the most grief for hooking things up. The problem with that is it puts your computer in an awkward spot in the engine compartment and it doesn't give you very many places to hide it and so you have to lengthen electrical uh, wires and that can also be problematic because if you goof that up that's like looking for a needle in the haystack so um, there are companies out there that will lengthen and do those things for you and you know it's not always a full hundred percent success um, if you have all the items out of a, of a vehicle and you wanna just you know, run it, uh, you still have to usually get the computer flashed and have the pats turned off in order to make everything work. Um, so we tend to err on the side of the control pack, um, a little bit simpler that way. Your AC system is always going to be a standalone system. It's never gonna be integrated into the uh, computer system. And so that will always function independently. Um, there's no body modules or anything to bump up the RPMs to uh, when you turn the AC on to work with your computer to kick up the idle. So you always have to do some tuning and get that set just right. Um, so we, we are toying around with the idea of building an all-inclusive harness that will work on the engine and the transmission power side of things that will allow you to have your computer where you want it, but that's probably about six months to a year down the road, but we are in the process of working on that. Let's see, F100 Syndicate asks, what is the most common part or piece that gets overlooked when doing a swap? Uh, pretty good question right there. Um, I, I would say probably the most overlooked part or piece that gets overlooked is tuning. Just because it starts up and runs doesn't mean that it's actually going to be running correctly. And if you 
at all put a custom intake on there. You put the MAF sensor in a different location, it's getting different air through there. Um, it's got you know different exhausts, the O2 sensors in a different location. You're more than likely going to need some tuning done and we recommend Lund Racing. Um, that's who we uh, are a dealer for and if it's something that you're needing some help with tuning we can get you set up. They do some remote tuning so you can do that from your your house, your garage, we send you a module out there and then you plug that in, you record some data, you send it back to Lund, they diagnose it and if you've got everything right you should be able to get the tuning process done and if not they'll give you a few pointers and things you can work on to clean things up so that you can do the tuning process so probably the most overlooked thing. Uh, Dickinson High Performance asked uh, are the 6R80 Coyote swaps better than using the 4R70W and which is the strongest? So the 4R70W or the 4R75W, um, those are really durable uh, transmissions. I know a lot of companies out there that build those and they're just about bulletproof. They can handle a lot of power. The only downside to that is you only have four gears. And so with the 6R80, getting the extra two gears actually makes a big difference. I find that the, the motors are really quick with those uh, lower gears in first and second and the overdrive works really well. And so I'm a huge fan of the 6R80. They're also pretty durable. A lot of people are putting a lot of power, even as much as 800 horsepower to those stock um, uh, transmissions. And you know, they're having a pretty good luck with them. So we have not had a 6R80 grenade or blow up on us and uh, neither a 4R75. Um, the only disadvantage with the 4R75 is you have to run a manual transmission harness um, or engine harness and uh, power pack and then you have to buy a separate controller for the 4R70 or 75W and you have to do all your tuning separately where with the 6R80 that can be done through Land Racing and make sure that all your shift points and everything are precise. A little bit better process. Straight Patina said, I uh, wanted to know how much frame alteration is usually involved in doing a Coyote swap. So. Um, hopefully not much. Um, I tr we try to set everything up where there's very minimal um, cab modifications or transmission tunnel modifications and hopefully we've got um, you know the least amount of frame modifications as, as well. There are some people that might have uh, you know a, a Mustang 2 front end suspension and they decide they want to get rid of the old 302 motor and put a Coyote swap in there. And the biggest problem they're going to have is that cross member on the Mustang II. Sometimes that might have to be modified. There might need to be a bevel cut into it um, just to get the motor to sit in correctly. But so far, from 1953 to 1979, we have not had to do anything more than maybe change the transmission hump out uh, to a high hump or a four wheel drive. And in the 5356s, the standard transmission hump actually fits perfect. You don't have any body modifications and no frame modifications. Um, the only frame modification that I have seen so far, um, that is depending upon if you're using a truck motor or a car motor, is some of the late 70s vehicles or the crew cab, you know, the late 70s crew cab vehicles where the cross members and such are um, a little bit awkward to fit around and so you can only go so high without getting to your transfer case into your floor on a four-wheel drive and so you have to actually um, make a couple notches and uh, weld some pieces in there in order for that to work so good question let's see silent but deadly wanted to know will a coyote fit in a 2003 tacoma well we have a ford ranger out here and uh I don't know if a Coyote would fit in it very well. There'd be a lot of modifications and I'm going to assume that a Tacoma would actually be the same. And then the next question is why? Um, um, we'll move on past that one. Uh, let's see, Rockin' with Dockin' wanted to know, what's the average cost and where do you source your motors? So sourcing your motors, um, you have to decide if you want new or used. And so uh, we sell new Coyote packages here. And then we also um, can source used motors. Now, a used s motor can come from, um, you just buy a wrecked Mustang or a wrecked F-150. Um, it can come from 
you know, as an eBayer that that's what they do is they buy used cars and they pull all the stuff out. They know what you need. Uh, they sell that and usually what they're trying to do is recover the cost of the purchase of the vehicle. Maybe make a thousand bucks off the deal or, or a little less and then they park the rest of the car out and that's where they make the profit on. But usually they got to be able to cover most of their expenses with the motor because that's what's worth the most. Um, if you buy a used motor, you do have some risk involved and so you need to make sure that you're not getting one that's had front end collision. Um, and so you need to make sure that uh, it's something that you can check out and somebody's going to be willing to stand behind. Uh, we buy motors from some places like LKQ um, and uh, they work with us to make sure you know we get good quality motors and we've actually had to reject a few motors um, because uh, they've had holes in the valve covers and maybe there was rocks in there and like well we can't have that so you gotta be really really picky uh, when you're getting a used motor but they can save you a ton of money um, and so a lot of times uh, you can buy a used Coyote motor and it can have five or six thousand miles on it which is like brand new and you get the alternator and you get your AC compressor and you get a lot of things that you might you know not have to buy separately when you buy a new crate motor so but there are some hard realities when doing a coyote swap and that is it's actually expensive just like everything else you're going to have things like um, let's just say you've got your 1967 F100 it's been sitting for five years you want to go put a coyote swap in it and get it going and then you realize that you need wiring throughout the whole truck not just the motor and so you got to rewire the whole truck you want to put new gauges in it you want to go through and uh, get air conditioning put in it and so you got all these little tiny details that have to go into it so you can spend easily just buying a used motor and parts just parts you can spend about twenty thousand dollars just like that um, exhaust parts drive shaft um, transmission coolers um, radiators, fuel tanks, uh, headers, so it can add up quickly. Um, and then if you hire a shop, a professional shop to put it together, then you know you're adding you know usually another you know ten to twenty thousand dollars to it just to get that going. Let's see, Jeff Ashlock wanted to know uh, 67 to 72 F100 Coyote 6R80 auto swap with aftermarket steering column with shifter on the column, linkage options, what cables, brackets, routing, blah 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 for a 10R80. So a 6R80 and a 10R80 are basically the same size transmission. A very very little differences um, and so the biggest difference obviously is four extra gears. Now um, one of the things that you know when you're connecting it up you have to decide if you're going to try to uh, use a stock column that's in the 6772 or 7379, uh, rebuild it and use that, or if you're going to put in a new column. Now, there's pluses and minuses to using the stock column. The stock column is there, and you can buy the components from like LMC, and you can rebuild that whole column and paint it up, and, and, and it works. And then you just gotta, you know, sometimes that bottom piece that the rod mounts to, you might have to bend that out a little bit, create some clearances, and then you can put a, like a low car shifter for a 4R70, um, for a 75W and you can actually put that shifter and bend it and have it go all the way down and connect it to the transmission shifting uh, arm which we actually have a custom shifting arm for that. Um, we got one for a 6R80 and a 10R80. Um, or maybe because of space and you don't have a lot of room you want to use a low car um, the shift cable and in that case you know you're going to run that cable down along the back come up from behind and connect that into the transmission. A lot of this just comes down to preference. I will tell you that we don't rebuild columns anymore and here's the main reasons. One, it's a used column and usually when we start rebuilding it, uh, for us, uh, time is money. And if I have a guy spend a day rebuilding a column, I may as well just got the customer a brand new column for the amount of money it's gonna cost. And so we, we've gone to, the, uh, to just not rebuilding columns anymore and we only use the Flaming River columns. Um, I did it makes a great column and we like their columns as well but uh, we've learned over time that Flaming River makes a really good column that fits all of our applications and so they're able to design it and build it precisely the way we want it and, and, it, and it just works perfectly for us and mainly the the cone from on especially an automatic with a shift column the cone is about two inches more compact 
than on the I did it. And especially if you're doing trucks and you're, you know, you got it and you've got the steering wheel right here and then you kind of want more space, you know, uh, and so that actually sometimes can't be done unless that cone is more compact. And so, um, especially on C10 pickup trucks, uh, we run into that all the time and Flaming River has been kind of that, that choice that helps us solve that. Now, um, with, with the new column, another thing you can actually do is if you buy a new column, you actually can get a, a neutral safety switch built into the column. And so that becomes something that is a little bit complex when doing a coyote swap is that where do you put the neutral safety switch? How are you gonna do this? Of course, Dakota Digital makes something and there's all this extra work that can you know, be put into it, but uh, uh, less headache by getting a new Flaming River column with the neutral safety switch. If you wanna know which column, uh, we're a dealer for Flaming River and we can help you out with that one. Um, let's see, Gilbert Trevino wanted to know, do you need to make chassis modifications to accommodate the huge increase in power? Um, yes, if you're going to be using a stock frame, um, you might need to box that in, especially with a 53 to 56, you're gonna need to box that in, you know, front and back. Um, we don't do anything for a 53 to 56, um, even all the way up to, um, you know, the 60s. You've gotta do something for the suspension. You can't use um, a stock 53 chassis and a stock um, suspension with a solid front ax axle and put a Coyote motor in it. Um, it's, just, it's just way too much. Even a 6772, um, you really don't need a lot of high performance you know, uh, work done to a motor because it's plenty and more than enough power, even with a truck motor going in a 6772 for stock suspension. Fine in the front, but usually gonna have to do something in the back like cow tracks or something just to keep that rear end from hopping because it's gonna be a lot of power for it. Um, ideally, changing the suspension out is you know the best route to go. Put a four link in it. Uh, we make a four link kit for 67 through 96 and you can buy that. And then also um, uh, we're working on actually a new product for uh, 66 through 96. Uh, that will be a cool little um, bolt-in product for independent front and front suspension. Um, but yes, make sure you've got you know a, a good cross members in there for the power. Little Red Fred wanted to know what are the cost ranges depending on the level of build. So, if you're hiring us to do a full build, um, uh, it really just depends on um, what you're wanting to have done and how good of a truck you know you're dropping off here to begin with. If you've got a truck that has just, you know, it's pristine, it's a good runner driver, you just need to have a coyote swap done or a drivetrain done. And, uh, you know, you're probably gonna, you know, start off at about, you know, $40,000, $45,000 to be honest with you. Um, parts, labor, all the components to make it work. But if you want to, you know, you brought in something that's not great, um, you're going to need uh, everything, fix some sheet metal, body, paint, probably a new frame, um, then, you know, you're definitely going to be starting, you know, right at about $125,000 just, you know, out of the gate. And it can be much more expensive than that, depending upon all the little things that you might want. So let's see, DSR Fab wanted to know header clearances and brake booster clearances on a 6772 F250. Um, so on a two wheel drive pickup truck, uh, getting into some of the, the bigger two wheel drives like a F250 or even an F150 that is an extended cab, things are a little bit different. And so we have really poor clearances for header issues when you put a Coyote swap in some of these larger extended cab F150s, F250s, and all the four wheel drives. Um, in a 6772 F100 with um, all stock suspension. Our kit will allow you to put that in there and with a little bit of trimming you can get the stock Mustang Coyote headers in there and also the truck headers but as far as uh, anything else um, you're gonna need headers made and um, built, fabbed, cut, modified, whatever you, you need to do and maybe some frame trimming. Uh, what we've done is uh, just due to all the variables we've we've come up with headers for 
that pretty much work from about 57 all the way up to 79 and have about five different versions. Um, just as we come across them here in our shop, we'll design a new set of headers that will continue to be hopefully something to solve problems uh, for you guys. Uh, obviously, they're not cheap. Uh, you're going to spend about $1,900 for a set of headers, roughly. And, um, but we custom make them. We don't mass produce them. And we usually we try to keep maybe one on the shelf um, so that it's a little bit quicker uh, shipping. But typically, by the time you place an order, by the time we're ready to ship, it takes about um, you know, two weeks. And so um, definitely a lot of issues. Not a lot of brake booster issues um, for these trucks. Um, one of the things on you know these uh, F100 motors and everything you'll notice if you pay attention is that when you're working on an F100 or an F150 is all the motors are offset to the passenger side just a little bit and so it might be you know just an inch or two and that was because they're providing a little bit more space for the driver's feet uh, trying to line things up with the nine inch uh, in the back and that it just everything's off center so if you look at it and pop the hood you'll notice your motor's off center so when you're installing a coyote motor honestly in order to make it all work on some of these they're going to be off center just a little bit as well for all the clearance issues and so it's something that uh, you know is a little bit common um, if you're doing something from scratch a brand new frame and you have lots of room, you're probably okay putting it centered. Cuban asked, can you connect an IDIT steering column to a 6R80 transmission? Yes, you can. Um, low car makes, again, the same kit we talked about earlier of getting that connected. So um, these are some of the questions. Uh, you know, there's a lot more questions I'm sure people might uh, want to know. And I wish I could think of all of, them, all of them for you and answer them all. At the end of the day, have fun. Um, you know, we, we're trying to be here to do what we can to off, offer as much advice and through the videos. Uh, we get tons of phone calls and unfortunately um, we would spend all day as a tech support for people uh, answering phone calls and so it's a little bit diff difficult. Uh, if people are buying products from us and uh, especially if they're buying a lot of products from us for their Coyote Swap, you know, we do feel some obligation and loyalty uh, to you guys to make sure that, you know, we're there for you to help you out and, and solve any, you know, questions we, we can um, answer for you. Um, there's a, a Facebook page, uh, F100 Coyote Swaps. Um, that's a page that we manage. Um, I try not to, you know, be too crazy on there because I really believe that when the community can help each other, um, you know, people learn. And so I do pop in there every now and then and try to answer questions. Sometimes I'm on there as Fat Fender Garage. Sometimes I'm on there just as Jason Ole and I try to do what I can to offer some suggestions. We don't know everything. Um, there's a lot of people out there that know some things that are different and that's great. That's what makes this, you know, community such an awesome community is that we get to work with the great people and we get to learn from each other. Um, and we're not perfect and we make mistakes and, you know, we're always learning and hoping to improve our craft and get better at what we're doing. Um, we love F100s, we love Chevys, we love Dodges, and that's about it. Um, uh, all the other trucks are cool too, but uh, you know, we kind of stick with, um, you know, kind of what we know. There's a lot of things that um, we don't know and we don't do a lot of cars, as you can see. We mostly try to specialize in trucks so that we can be really good at that and not, you know, overcomplicate our lives too much with trying to know everything about everything. So hopefully those are helpful tips and, and, and tricks for you. Um, there's a lot of product that we're going to be loading up on our website. Um, and uh, hopefully, you know, we'll continue to make videos and link those to the website so it makes it a little bit easier on your F100 Coyote Swap project. If you like this video, uh, don't hesitate to uh, let us know if you'd like to have more questions answered. Happy to make a part two in this and help people out with uh, more questions, different questions. And so uh, comment below if you have different questions. We'll try to make a, a part two. Make sure you subscribe so you know when we make that part two maybe a part three, part four, and try to keep these uh, together and answer as many questions as we can. Thanks a lot. We'll see you.